cool. Okay, so we, we're talking about 1993. That, that tour to Argentina, were you at the but Did you go on the tour? Uh, yes, you did. Um, yeah, you, you, the Battle of Tucumán, do you, do you, do you have <laughs> fond recollections of that game? <laughs> yeah, I think we all did. I, uh, yeah, it started, I think, a very um, aggressive crowd from the start. When you arrived there, you know, because it's uh, the fence that in it, we, you know, you were walking around on the field and that, but you could already see them being very, very aggressive. You know, they'll call you over and just spit in your face. And um, so we knew from the start, you know, there's going to be a bit of a, it's going to be a bit of a tough game. And it was so, uh, Tucumán was always, the touring teams, we knew that there was, there was fights happening and that. But, um, you yeah, know, I think, I think that the, the fight itself, it was more, I think, involved in the fr uh, front row, I think it happened. And uh, you know, it just pulled over. But I think the tension was just there to, to niggle. And it just continued and continued and continued. Um, I think the one story that Doc, uh, Doc France was saying is that, well, it was uh, speechly the um, fissure that it is rain jacket on. And he got so sorry to spat on that his whole back was full of, you know, spit basically uh, because he was sitting next to the field. But yeah, it was a horrible game. Uh, you know, it's not what rap is about, but you know, the guys came off quite well, you know, and ended up on their try line with a fight. So it means we scored another the try in a case, you know, with, uh, with that fighting. So we, we ended that, that too. I mean, the first test, you guys dominated the first half, and then in, this, in the second half, they came back very strongly. But in the third test, you won comfortably. And if I remember yeah. correctly, it was the debut game for Lem, for, for Henry Honeyball, yes. and also for, for Chester, probably. And yes. I think Gavin Johnson came in for, for Juba at fullback in that game. So South African rugby actually ended, the, ended that year in quite, a, in quite a good space. If you consider yeah. that they'd only just lost, you'd only just lost to Australia. But then in the following year, um, again, it seemed like everything was sort of dear McCarr again, because you, you played against England, and that first test in England against England at, at Loftus was a complete disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, I think it was a disaster. I, I think just uh, if you, I've just I can remember around the players. I think get, getting the players in, and you know, he had, he had quite a, a lot of personalities and uh, different personalities, you know, and James and Brendan and Annie Larue. And I think, you know, the guys, you know, there was so much focus on, you know, I would say, on the field, the right things, but everyone had too much to say, you know, and at the end of the day, it was, it was getting difficult, you know, um, where, we, you know, you, you couldn't have a practice without a four-hour discussion about uh, one move type of thing, you know, and I think that, that, that just became, that actually came through in the game because there was no, you know, how can I say? There was no rhythm in the, in, in, in the back line. I'm just talking from a back point of view, but I, I think we, we, we were just undercooked in a sense in a lot of areas, you know, for the, maybe the wrong reason. But I think it was more from a player point of view rather from a coaching point of view. Um, uh, yeah, I think there's just too many strong personalities that wanted to say something. Was, 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 was maybe part of the problem then the fact that Transvaal were having so much success under Kitch. And it took a while for those guys to buy into to, to Max yeah. game. We, we spoke to Henny about something else a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure we'll speak to Henny again, like we're speaking to you today. And I want to ask him, uh, you know, because a lot of people, well, it was clear that he didn't really buy into the game plan. Or, I mean, uh, direct rugby. And if, and as a fly, if you're going to play successful direct rugby, you need a fly half who is fully committed. And, yeah. you know, the story was that he, he finally started to believe in Mac's game, like right at the end, just before Mac got sacked. Yeah. I mean, was, was that part of the problem that, you know, there wasn't that much mark? No, I think you're 100% right. You, you, you hit it on the nail there. It, it is part of the problem because you had, a, a, I think, a mix between Transvaal or, and, and, and Natal, you know, so, and you've got high guys believing it and the other don't, you know, um, and then you've got to add on from Freestead as well. So that's, I think, I think my point earlier is just, it was just too much of, you know, thinking of your own game type of thing, rather work with what the coaches, you know, want to bring on. I, I know Casey Pino was frustrated at one stage, you know, um, you know, with the practice as well. And uh, it's just because of, you know, everyone having so much to say. But it is a, a, this, the different styles, you know, that was played. And of course, course Transvaal won that, uh, the final. So they had a lot to say in that this work and that work. And, you know, your stuff doesn't work because we counter it. So, you know, it became a bit of a, I won't say a banter, but it becomes a bit of an issue. Because then you went on that, you, you actually hammered England in the second test. 
And that was a really good, like, sort of backs to the wall performance. And then yeah. you went on tour and, like, you know, you butchered that first test, I mean, against the All Blacks in Dunedin. I mean, you should have won that game. Uh, I think that with a couple of goal kicks were missed. I think, I think that's where Mac actually made, it, made quite a bad selection error when he dropped Juba for the second test because yeah. the guys, because you had a goal kicking problem. And I think he brought Theo in to, to, to kick the goals. But then missing Juba, like, also caused a bit of a, a problem within the camp, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think there was continuity and the team as well, you know. So that just, yeah, it's, I think there was important. This, you know, again against All Blacks, this, the small things that count, you know, um, especially in test matches there and when it's wet as well. Um, but I think uh, most coaches make those decisions. They make sometimes the wrong one at the wrong time, and you know, some don't. Uh, but yeah, you know, that could have that was a change. I think also from Mac, you know, I think we. we things started changing as well, you know, and, uh, you know, got a lot of criticism and it started, I think, snow building from there slowly, you know, to 95, or, well, enough 94 there. Were you, were you injured for the last test? I know Yopi came in and he played with Brendan in that game. Yeah, um, yes, I hurt my, I hurt my knee or my knee, I hurt my knee or my neck or something and that's why I didn't play. I think I was, I went back earlier, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so, but in the two tests that you played, because, I mean, we went on to beat the All Blacks the following year, obviously, in the World Cup. In, in the two tests that you played, considering you were playing away, playing New Zealand away, I mean, you must have sort of felt that, although they won, I mean, they were both incredibly close games, you must have felt, well, you know, it's just a matter of time before we as South Africans will start beating these guys. Yeah, we, you know, the belief was always there, you can beat them, you know, um, and uh, those games, it, 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 is, it was close. And at that time, it was either a penalty, just a stupid penalty, or you know, ill discipline. Uh, it was really stupid stuff that you, you couldn't do against them. And I think even today, you still can't do it. You know? And that's what uh, the difference is. And uh, I think that was, uh, we always had the belief you can beat all blacks. You know, uh, that's, that's, you know, have to believe it because if you don't, you know, they'll be all over you. Um, but yeah, we dominated them in most of the game as well. Uh, just, just small things that cost us. Okay, and, and so, so then after that tour, you didn't plan to catch at all, um, from what I recall. And and so you missed you you missed and you missed out on the World Cup because of the injury. Can you can you remind me what that injury was? It must have been quite neck, a serious one because you didn't neck injury quite a while. Was it neck? Yeah, neck. Yeah. Yeah, so no, look, we went on that 94 trip, I think, with kids when I think, he, you know, most of this team, were, uh, not the team, but the Francois, Yapi, all those we guys. Yeah, I was on that tour, yeah. Um, so I think uh, we had Peter, uh, it's Peter Hendricks, we could just go through the team, myself, Yapi. I think Henny was fly off, um, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, was. Was, was it now? US was for us, uh, US was Scrum Skark, or talking Afrikaans here. Um, yeah. And Juba and the fullback, yeah. So um, we we played that at, in Swansea. I think we had a good uh, tour, and then came back. Um, then I think we had a Super Rappy coming up, and we played a game against uh, England A because they had a team that they brought out. But I remember still Paul uh, Grayston, the fly off. Um, I had a good um, <laughs> a view of him from the wrong side to to hit him quite hard and. Uh, uh, on his on his hip, and I just mistimed it and hit my head against his uh, uh, hip bone, and then fractured like uh, two vertebrae and tore the ligaments in my neck and all of that. Um, because on that Sunday, I was at, I remember the the fissure was his name Greg. Um, yeah. he was, he was yeah. Some needles in me, and just to get the spasm out because they did an MRI scan the next week, and uh, I remember him still walking into the. Um, Fissure room and his, uh, his face was white and he, he said, "Just take. I'm going to take everything off. Don't move." And he put the brace on. He says, "Now you just broke your neck, you know, in two places or the vertebra." So yeah, so I had to uh, get dressed and get the brace on and uh, had to go Monday to see the uh, specialist. And I think they operated a week later. So that was a that was a heck of a reason to uh, to miss that World Cup year. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, considering that you could have been in it, and not saying you were, but you know that you had a good opportunity to be in that. Did you feel in that tour? Because Mac told me that he felt that when he went to that Swansea game, he was there as a spectator. You might remember he'd been dropped as a Springbok coach, and then he he's got yes. so passionate, he's so passionate about his rugby that he he went on tour as as a fan. And I remember bumping into him and, and him telling me afterwards that for the first time he said the box are starting to play my game. I mean, and yeah. there was a sort of feeling that the box 
like had finally started to cotton onto the Ian McIntosh way. And then Kitch came in and sort of brought in the discipline. But but the players actually, but then were, I mean, Brendan Fenter actually told me that. He said, we started to play in McIntosh rugby after that. He said, just when, yeah. just when they dropped him was when, was when the box actually finally started to cotton onto his, his, his direct game. No, yeah, hundred percent. I think, and where uh, Kitch and them and me becoming it's just from a fitness point of view with Ray and them. I think that's what they they just stepped up that one notch further. Um, yeah. you know, the skill levels, the way they played, you could see that it, it was the you know was it was a it was was Max way. You know, I think they added here and there, but yeah, the, the, the core was was there. So you missed the so you missed the World Cup year. Where were you in the World Cup final was played? <laughs> I was in the stand, sitting on the right, the second road from the from the top on the main stand. I was there. I was invited by a corporate to go and went and watched the game. Okay, and then if I remember correctly, you you went to Australia, didn't you? Leave rugby for a while. Yeah, you went to play, you went to play rugby league, didn't you? Yeah. And, but never. But that was the rugby league thing that didn't happen. Or, what, yeah, what was uh, happening was that straight after the World Cup, I think Francois and them came with the, the whole packer package mm. at this one stage to buy all the, you know, to get all the players to buy into it. And at the same time, uh, I think the agent was Jason Smith, and at that time was very linked in Australia and, and, and England. And he mentioned that they were starting that Super League um, in England and also Australia. And then. Um, we were already in negotiations just after the World Cup final, you know, with the, with the Australians already. Um, but at the same time, France were phoned me as well and, and, and mentioned it to me. So <laughs> it was funny. I actually flew up to Johannesburg to meet the, the guys from Super League um, in, a, in a hotel. And France went them in the same hotel, just in the different times. Um, we're actually in two different rooms. So I'm actually lying. We did in two different rooms, you know, like the one was in one room and the other. And we were going from one meeting to the other. But Francois at that stage and the, what was happening there wasn't concrete. And, you know, I, I wanted to play rugby and I was fit again. Um, and also it was a new challenge. So that's why I went with the Super League, you know, and I think that's why Andrew Fools and I think Tian and Andrew Marinos and Warren uh, Ross also went at that stage as well. Aitken, Andrew Aitken as well, I think. Well, if they, yeah. Yeah. And Christian Stewart? Yeah, yes, and Christian as well. Yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, there were quite a few of you guys that left. And, and you sort of, you know, you, it was as if your rugby career was over. Would you have made that decision if you know rugby was going to become professional? Because remember, the rugby was amateur up until the, the, the eve of the, of the World Cup final in 95. So in other words, uh, 25 years ago today, rugby had only just become professional. Yeah. Uh, would you have made a different decision if, if you'd known that? No, because there was uncertainty then, and also, you know, I think with your neck as well, um, you know, I think unions will be, would have been reluctant uh, to, to look at you, and, you know, from a contract point of view, you know, I think it was a big, uh, you know, it was a bit, bit of concern, even with, uh, with the Sharks at that stage, you know, the, the negotiations of the contracts was, you, you, you were very down low at the bottom, you know, because of the risk, you know, um, and I think it was a financial decision, yes, it was. Um, but also, it was uh, it was a, I wanted you know I wanted a challenge you know and uh, you know to, to 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 go and try league and see what it's about you know. Did you did you get to play much league? Because I've, it didn't take place because of um, some contractual issue with the TV yeah. or something. But did you did you actually ever get to play league? Yeah, we we played a couple of games. Uh, more we played about three or uh, played about four or five games, but uh, mostly in the second team because. They were not confident in sending you up, and at the same time, there was then you played the one weeks, and then it was a court case. Then you played the one week. Um, so I think uh, me and Heinrich played against each other once. I think uh, when he was playing Newcastle, nice to be playing in the second, you know, the uh, second team basically, and then. But after that, I think Andy made Andy made it the first to the Bulls' first side, and that. But yeah, it was very. Very bitty, Bob. You know, and it was only a short, but short time about I think six months or seven months that you that you were training three months and played basically three months. And what was it like playing? I mean, the, the, the different. How easy was it to adapt? I mean, we see lots of league players coming to union. Um, what is it like to go from union to to league? I, th the, I think the difference was we were not professional. You know, getting to a rapid league club. You know, they had a full facility gym. You know, you eat there. Um, yeah, everything gets done there. You've got a uh, track where you go, um, and the, the, just the, the 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 quantity of training was quite a bit, you know, because you were half past seven there in the morning. Break, uh, yeah, yeah, you can have breakfast and then gym, then it's speed, then uh, you know speed training, or it's uh, 
boxing or swimming and then afternoon physical, you know, then, and then a fitness and then you go back home at five o'clock. So it was eight or five. And I think that was the hardest part. Uh, but uh, also physically and mentally, it was quite tough uh, to get through it because the Aussies were also pushing you down. You, you, you didn't play as, you know, you, 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 you're weak and you, you don't have skills and all of that, you know. So it was a continuous battle in a sense, but it also on the other side made you stronger uh, as a player and, you know, it's, you know, to believe in yourself. And they're quite harsh uh, uh, at that stage, you know, they will make, you, you know, tackle the, heart, the biggest guy that's there or, you know, that they'll make it difficult for you. But maybe they did it for a good reason uh, to toughen you up. But, uh, you know, the studio grounded it was fine. Uh, but he taught me after, afterwards with the, with the rugby coming back that, you know, you know, it doesn't matter who's in front of you, you know, you can, you can give them a good smack and, and move on, you know, and be confident in yourself and your abilities, you know. Um, I think that's what got me in the professionalism, I think, the training and all of that and the fitness and the levels you have to be at. Okay. And then, um, because the, the, you, you couldn't have been away for that long because, if I remember correctly, the end of your tour in 96, when the box went to the board, I remember you playing a brilliant game for the box um, at some point around about then. It would, so did you play un, under Markroff right on that end of your tour? And that mm -hmm. test in Bordeaux when, when, when the box won, you were, you were probably the box man of the match. Was it, was it 96 or it couldn't have been no. the following year? No, it was no, no, 96. Um, nine, I just no, 96. No, yeah. no, no, I didn't play 96. You played, you played in Toulouse, didn't you, for a bit? Yeah. I played in Toulouse in 96, yeah, and then uh, came back and played for Sharks in 96. The, uh, the NFT, yeah, I didn't play. I, 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 hit my, um, I hit my shoulder or my, or my, my knee, so I didn't go on that NFT tour. And the same okay. in 97 as well. Okay. Go, well yeah. So when was that test match in Bordeaux where you were so good? The, you, were, you, were, you were brilliant in a, in a test match in Bordeaux. Huh? <laughs> I can specifically remember, and I was sure that it was when the hockey was in coach. <laughs> Maybe you don't remember. No, the only time you look up. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I just remember the only time I played in France was in 92, 92 I, that was the only time I never went, we never been, I never went back to France. I remember they toured that, that tour, but never in France in 97, 98. 98. No, okay, I'm thinking 96, okay. You, well, you might have had not, too much Bordeaux there, Gav, I don't know. Yeah, maybe we should check the record. But anyway, um, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that, that you played a. It was a great game. It was a great game. You played a really brilliant game that day. I'll accept that coming from you. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> so, so okay, so from uh, the if you say you take it, if you've got a great game. I'll accept it. I'll take it. <laughs> so you, so 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 you um, because I remember that your your really brilliant season for the box was actually under Mallet in, in 98. Now, don't tell me that you went there because you were brilliant in that. When we won for the first time in Wellington, um, you were playing alongside Lem in that game. I mean, you were, you were immense in that, in, in, that, in, that, in that year, 98. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a good year. I must admit it was, uh, I think. Actually, you were there at least. Okay, I was right. Okay, carry on. <laughs> No, I think 19, no, just 19, it was just a great year. I think Nick just brought in a lot of belief into players and that. So, uh, so um, I think, and also coming back from league and, uh, you know, just, just you know, you, your confidence are up and, you know, you, that, that, I think that's what made it easier. But you had a good team around you and good players, you know. I think we had a solid, solid side that year. Because I think what a lot of people forget is that you were actually quite pivotal to, to the box winning the Tri-Nations that year because your defence... Your, your, your physical play was, was, you know, you were very influential there. And, and I think Mallet would probably say that now as well. Uh, but then we, we, went to, we, went to, we went at the end of the year to what uh, we played Wales and Wembley. And it ended the tour where, where, where we didn't break the record because we lost to Twickenham. You were injured and you didn't make that tour. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah that was your what, what was that injury? No, it was, no, that's what I say. There was a, there was a so, shoulder in the injury, so I hit my shoulder that year. So that's why I didn't go. Uh, okay, okay. Bryn, you are going to ask something? Yeah, no, I was going to say, before that, I just want to go back. You're talking about uh, winning the Tri-Nations. I mean, I remember, obviously, everyone remembers the Wellington game and, and the box win over there. But just yeah. after that, the, there was a game at Kings Park, I, I believe. I, I think you played in that one as well, where you guys were down quite badly against the All Blacks and came back, I think, one by a point there. Uh, Still remember, I think Bob Skinstead and James Dalton were quite in that second half, quite prominent as well. 
Dolphins scored the winning try. Yeah. I mean, that was quite a big win. I mean, it's not often you come back from being down like that to beat the All Blacks as well. But I suppose that showed the amount of confidence in that side as well. Look, yeah, I, I think half half time uh, Nick was, um, you know, trapping us out and kicking boots around like uh, uh, what's his name, Ferguson from Man United, and swearing, yeah. you know, every every word that's possibly can. And um, yeah, we, we we were not confident <coughs> in the half time. I think I think even Gary will mention it. It was a, you know, we, uh, I can't remember. I was sitting next to him. I'm like, this is going to be tough, eh? And uh, you can just see the guys were down. But as like Gary also mentioned, it's just something triggering that second half. I think that first the first drive we scored in the second half just started triggering uh, the confidence again, and slowly it started building. You know, and sometimes it just it, you can just feel something is happening. You know, and uh, but yeah, it, it was a tough slog. But I think it just. It was just a confidence in the team binding together to 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 create that win, especially with 23. What was 23 or 26 three down or something? Which yeah. eventually, yeah, yeah, 23 five, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and we actually, if you think about it, we did played well in that first half. We just could not could not score. You know, we I think we made a big a couple of big mistakes as well that cost us. And, and then and then you went to Ellis Park. You went to Ellis Park to play the Tri Nations decider, and it was. The first time that Springboks were going for the Tri Nations because we hadn't won the Tri Nations before. Yost was brilliant in that game, if I remember yeah. correctly. What, what do you remember of that game? Because that was almost like a, a final as well. Yeah, yeah. Look, the, I think that the, the, on that game, I just I think we had so much confidence coming back from all, uh, from back from uh, New Zealand, and that I think we just had so much confidence, you know, that you know we can beat any side on any day. And I just remember that the game, they, the, the, everything was just. You know, when you uh, forward motion and you, you you you're dominating, you know, it it just make a big difference, especially against Australians. If you don't give them the the time and space to to to, you know, um, that I think that was a big change for us. Um, but yeah, the game itself, you know, <laughs> you, you don't remember so far back, but I think it was just a a good total game we played on that day. You know, we we controlled the front, at the backs. You know, we the fence was good, so it just combined into a good uh, final. You didn't. You didn't have that much involvement with the box after that because I think that injury and you were you were, you did play in the '99 World Cup year, but I always got the impression that you'd, you'd come back from injury or something and you weren't quite the you weren't quite the player that you were the the previous year. Would that be a, a, a right a right perception? Yeah, no, hundred percent. No, the, yeah, it wasn't the same in uh, the next year. I can I can say that um, that you know you just don't know about the reasons behind it and the psychological behind it. But yeah, no, it wasn't the right. You know, I think back into rehab trying to get back into the teams again uh, yeah it, it made it a bit difficult um uh, also i think from a team point of view depends on your team as well you know around you that that, that makes you you know um, as a player as well and visually you can only do so much but not blaming the team you, you, as, as a visual you have to do it yourself but um you know the team create a good environment for you to to do that you know and I think but the environment, the, the environment had had changed in '99 because that was the yeah. year when Cashman was dropped, and yeah. you know the, that whole sort of uh, vibe that you'd had before did go because you know I mean I don't know if it was Nick, but you know maybe some of the players, some of the other senior players weren't quite as 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 energetic as they were before or something. But I mean there was something there was something missing. No, you're hundred percent right, and um, we you, you can see it the vibe changes in a sense when you came to the first training sessions and. How it was conducted, you know, for, uh, bring is bring back the professionalism. Uh, it was, um, you know, you could see it's in province. I think won the Curry Cup, the you know, so there was a lot of influence and Solly and I think you know they. I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but you can see it was, it was the uh, the Stormers' way, and you know, so and the things did change. You know, I think Nick also in a sense, you know, the the way he came across as well. You know, it wasn't the same the previous year. And also, I think with some of the players being injured, you know, Lim was a crucial. Uh, you had some youngsters in, uh, you know, quality players, but it's just the rhythm wasn't there, if you can put it that way. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you don't know what happened behind closed doors you know, and the, the game plan that was played, or you know, what they what, what was discussed. You know, um, we when you went saw. to the world, when you went to the World Cup, I mean, there were some guys. I know Lim in particular. I mean, he'd, he'd admit it probably um, wasn't as great. Well, they were, he wasn't as passionate. Um, without Tash there as the captain as well. No, 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 he wasn't. You know, I, th uh, I think, you know, Tash 
just bonded the players a certain way. I, I think what U.S. tried to do in that in that um, in that World Cup, you know, trying to to get the guys back to where it was. He did a great job at the end, um, but yeah, you know, it's it, you just lose that you lose that spark somewhere, and it's difficult to get it back. And and it, it's it, it, I think it was too far down the line coming to the World Cup that you know you can you can uh, you can uh, get it back. Brent. Yeah, Bill, I was going to ask you, I mean, in that year, you guys also had that famous test at the Millennium Stadium. Um, uh, and I, I think famous you played it, that one, yes. Uh, I say famous for one reason, and, and, um, and as Gavin, Gavin knows, because he reported on that one, he was there, was, was the famous Rion Oval's uh, speech to the team about, about being the, the last white uh, Springbok team out there. Without, without getting into the merits of that, it, just, it, so, it sometimes feels to me that... Um, yeah, South African rugby, and, and you, we talked earlier about Louis Leite and the anthem and, and things like that. But it, it sometimes feels to me like South African rugby over the years has had this wonderful ability of shooting ourselves in the foot at the wrong side. So while, yeah. while a conversation like that was probably necessary with the players at some point, uh, to do it in the week of a test or a couple of days before a big test in yeah. Wales... Uh, it just seemed as the timing was was madness to do it at that stage, and I, I'm just wondering how much that sort of also contributed to the the way that mood in the team changed, um, with, with, in terms of maybe yeah you know, the disconnect between the administration and the players, and and then going into the '99 World Cup eventually as well. No, you're you're 100 right. That yeah, it was just a cluster of stuff up. You know, I think because even with you know with uh, Chester and some of the other guys as well, you know, it's just just you could, we couldn't believe it. You know, and they were disarrayed, and we were like, um, you know, it was horrible. You know, and you could see it. I think the frustration actually came out in the game. You know, I remember myself trying to, you know, run in and you know try to. Scott Cornell and I think we were ill, Ill, Ill disciplined in that game, Gavin. If you're not, and Brennan. So I just think that just shows you actually, you know, how the players felt about it because they were angry in a sense for, you know, for that for for, for, for that reason. But yeah, I think totally those things do play a role in you, you know building up to a Tri Nations and, and and a World Cup, you know, and it's right, and especially in a year like that, you wanted to have a smooth ride into a World Cup and, you know, have confidence in your team and a belief, you know, behind the, the, the organization and blah, blah, blah. We know there was political stuff going on, but it's a time and a place for that. Yeah, it just seemed like a place. I mean, there's 52 weeks in the year and to choose to do it a couple of days before a test in Wales is, doesn't seem like the, the cleverest thing to do. It was because of the circumstances at the time. It was because of certain articles that had been written by home and I'd written yeah. some of them where <coughs> ANC... The ANC politicians had had reacted to it, so so yeah. it was it was you know just the timing. I mean, Rian Rian got telephone calls from people and you know giving him absolute hell. I mean, he he was forced into a bit of a corner there as well. Mm, fair, anyway, enough. Sorry, fair, yeah, enough. fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I don't know why I'm coming up for Rian. I, I, I was just going to ask in the, in that '99, and you talked about years trying to do a, a good job there, and, uh, and that I remember still. I'm getting and and, and yeah, I'm giving away, but years finding me. A, Three o'clock in the morning after a report article, where um, they criticised his ca- his captaincy and and there seemed to be a bit of a two two camps in the team in in, in the environment. They're not not the necessarily the sharks guys, but it seemed to be yeah. almost like a, sort of a Rossi Yurst sort of vibe going. I was, the the coach was, involved. <laughs> I was gonna, trying to put it diplomatically there, but yeah, it seemed like that yeah. there was there wasn't they weren't the best of mates in that World Cup. So, sorry, who was that? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Russia. Yes. There was a clash between Russia and US during that World Cup. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I don't know if there was. Um, if there was a clash, I think. I think looking at Russia, he's a very technical, uh, analytic pl- player as well. He was a coach now, but I, I never, I never saw any, 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 any negativity of, of that sort, you know, there, there, there was at one stage, you know, with the selection um, with US and also the game plan with Nick, you know, that he wanted to play, you know, um, so, but not from that side that I could remember. I know Brennan did be a couple of people off, you know, with, with his overanalyze of the game and trying to put every five minutes input into the game, you know, into the analysis, but, um, 
but I can't remember anything like with Rusty and U.S. You know, um, um, you know, because I, I knew uh, U.S. Uh, not no U.S. well, but um, you know, U.S. always so chat to me and that World Cup about certain stuff. And I think you know maybe there was stuff happening behind the doors, but not what mm -hmm. I saw at all. And then on top of that, you had the the, the Gary Teichman being dropped just before the World Cup, and I suppose that didn't help help things either in terms of the mood of the squad going into that tournament um, with Bob and, and the, the whole sort of dynamic surrounding that. No, they, yeah. no they, they, they was, you know, um, they, they, like I said earlier, they, they were just, just a change and, but the dynamics did change. And again, you had your little splits in the World Cup again, you know, the, the, the uh, free status was one side. And I remember sitting in a, a coffee shop in Edinburgh uh, and you can see the pockets of guys and, you slowly see these little cancers developing you know, in, the, in, the, in the groups, you know, uh, uh, and, and that's, a, that's a dangerous thing, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a World Cup like that. Um, but, mm. but I think that's what you tried to prevent towards the end, you know, because there's uh, group stages, it was very much, there was a bit of a, a split of, of personalities and groupies, you know, um, and they tried to pull that together in the quarterfinals and finals, a uh, semifinal. Mm. And that was because of the Red Bull and Vodka that you guys had in Glasgow that night. After the, after the Spain game, you guys went and had a huge party. I remember you had a team meeting, you had a team meeting where, everybody, where everybody was very honest, apparently. This is what Oli has told us, and I know Mark has told me as well, Mark Andrews. And, I mean, it was, uh, do you remember that night? No, I actually don't. That means I must have been so pissed that I couldn't remember what happened. But I mean, now that you mentioned it, yes, there was a bit of an open... You know, you know, everyone. I remember you, you guys just open up about certain stuff. You know, um, but I think if I'm not mistaken, it was without uh, Nick. Or, uh, I think it was just the players. Yeah, no, Nick, no, yeah, it was you guys. Just, the, just the players. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, Look, just remember we haven't. Most of us guys didn't drink for the time till the last Spain game, but we just felt you know it's not part of us. We need to have a couple of drinks. You know, to, um, <laughs> but I think that was a good time just to get vent some shit out, basically, if you want to talk <laughs> it like that in French. When was your last Bok game? That was that 99, that third uh, playoff game against the All Blacks. Okay. Did you, did you retire from rugby after that? Or did you carry on playing for the Sharks the following year? I can't... I think you went to Cardiff, yeah. didn't you? Didn't yeah. You yeah. yeah, we had it. Sorry, we had a... Uh, 99, we had a disastrous uh, Sharks 2000 with Uri's. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying that it was him with this coach, but we had a bad, uh, bad run in Super Rugby, I think. We lost most of our away games. I think we won one or two games. Um, and then I think with the Barbarians, I uh, met up with uh, Neil Jenkins and, uh, and Rob Howley. Um, and then they just said that Cardiff was looking. So I went to Cardiff for four years and played over there for four years from 2000 to okay. June 2000. Okay, I, I remember bumping into you. I was at the, that, that pub in Cardiff called Walkabout. Yeah, Walkabout. I think Australian, an Australian pub, and it was yeah, before, before, a Springbok, before a Springbok game against Wales, I can't remember which year it was, and you, I bumped into you there, and I'm sure at that stage you were sort of going into coaching, you were, you were about to start coaching somewhere, or you, or you had already been coaching. Yeah, look, 2004 finished, but I, then that year I went to Doncaster and coached the uh, uh, Division One club in Doncaster for two years there, so I was just finishing off. My last year playing for Cardiff. Okay. Did you not go? Did you not go into coaching? Are you not think of going into coaching? No, I did. I, I was. I was basically the director of rugby, and I was player. And I played one or two games for Doncaster as well. At that stage, you know. Uh, there. But then I went after that to be a donor for three months. That was just an interim. The coach was fired, like the Italians will do. You know, just two, uh, three months before the season. Uh, and they're just looking at interim coach. And in the meantime, I got a coaching job in, in Tokyo uh, for the Rico Rams for, for a year and a half. And then came back to South Africa and then another two years in Piacenza that I, I did. But then after that, got back uh, due to my daughter being going to school and that. So um, I came back to South Africa. You've never, to coached, you've, never coached, you've never coached here? No, I, I, I tried to get into a couple of the unions, but uh, it was very much um, closed up at that stage. So uh, it wasn't worthwhile pursuing and my, uh, my ex-wife now uh, didn't want me to, to travel or move overseas again. And she wasn't uh, either want to move, you know, so it became a bit of a, uh, bit of a difficult 
mm. position, you know, um, so <laughs> I had to look for something else. I remember you uh, seeing you socially in Cape Town a couple of years ago, and you did say to me that there might be some option, and you said at the time that you wouldn't mind getting involved. Has there been something that's happened latterly, or, or was that no. closed or definitely closed? No, I think at some stage you, you, you get, um, I wouldn't say frustrated, but uh, with, with the rapid legions, at some point it was, we, um, you know, you get to a point where you've been there for a couple of years and just sort of try, trying to get back into the coaching, you know, and also my, my wife do have a, a EU passport, so we were, we were thinking, do we go overseas? And uh, after it was from a personal point of view, we were looking, we were trying to, for babies and nothing happened. So we just thought, why don't we just go back overseas? And I think that was basically when I mentioned to you that maybe yeah. you can look at coaching overseas or schools or, or something like that, you know, but... Uh, no, not anymore. It's fine, you know. It's uh, it's it's past, and you know they have to move on. I know you were involved with SA Legends for a while. What are you actually doing now? I am. Um, <laughs> this fine. No COVID, but uh, I I got a uh, distributorship uh, for uh, it's a it's a biotech company, but it, they basically do uh, sanitizing. But they've got products in the different sectors. Um, but I did last year uh, May, so it's been running since last year May. But it's completely different to most of the chemical products. I was not a chemical product. So it's an international company from New Zealand, a New Zealand based company. So um, yeah, so we've been running for about almost a year uh, as that. So that's my new job. So uh, that's why I said to you yesterday about the COVID. We've got clientele now that when this case is, we go out and decontaminate the areas and that. Okay. But yeah, so that, that is our, that's my job at the moment. So. Okay. You guys must be quite busy now, I reckon. That. So. Yeah, it is. It, it is. We ours is a bit different. Ours is from a more we we call it a, a, a hygiene chain or a lifestyle. It's more of um, looking at your, your your facility or your areas how to save money. It's not about the, just the COVID, it's, you know, because it kills bacteria, viruses, uh, fungal, and spores. So the, the the industry is 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 quite vast. It's just the, the jackpot, if you want to call it of COVID is here that you have to fulfill now. But mm -hmm. uh, I was work on, I was working on a longer term process of, you know, abs bringing down absentees, you know, and the, and the crashes and stuff like that, but also doing the sanitized, that is the part of it, but more bacterial, but the viral is also a part of it now, the, the virus side mm -hmm. of it as well. Okay, yeah, cool. I think, Kev, I, don't know, I think we pretty much done. Are you, you no, no, excellent. You know? Yeah, oh, really, really a good chat. Thank you, Peter, yeah. My pleasure. No, thank you. Sorry for <laughs> stuffing around, but uh, we're on twenty four seven when it comes to these uh, <laughs> cases. Uh, and I've got a couple of clients on the west coast, so there's an hour's drive, and you you have to be there. Um, so sometimes it's uh, unexpected, you know, five o'clock or eight o'clock at night. So no, that's understandable. <laughs> don't worry. We don't worry. We got you eventually. That's the main thing. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> set aside, no, gonna sit aside. Don't worry. Whatever happens. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to look like a draw. <laughs> no, cool. Thank you very much, man. Thank yeah, you, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Thank you very cool. much. Good to see I'll you again.